All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board meeting. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, September 19th, 2019. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> all right, Planning Board members present tonight, Frank Underwood. Sean Winston, we have the Vice Chair Nicole Fecto, we also have Mike LaRue, and we have Dave Ross Lines. We also have in attendance here our town planner, our town code enforcement officer, and our town planning technician slash webmaster slash Facebook administrator slash um, summer uh, concert concer planner. Con concert, yeah, summer concert uh, promoter James slash all round good job. And a couple applicants. Well, 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 we'll look at the minutes first right. and decide whether or not. <laughs> How good he is. Yeah. Speaking of minutes. <laughs> Public comment session is open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and speak before the planning board where anything that relates under the purview of the land use ordinance, feel free to come forward. We also have a public hearing this evening on an application. So um, public comment session is open. See nobody come forward, we'll close the public comment session. Moving on to the approval of minutes for the September 5th, 2019 meeting. I have a few um, <laughs> things. Um, under approval of minutes, number one, where it says Nicole Fecto and Sean Winston pointed out a typo, there is a typo in that sentence. That's ironic. Yeah, it's the spelling of my name. I'm sure you can figure it out. <laughs> on page two because now I'm on a roll. Under the first real paragraph, I just want more clarification um, on the, let's see, the third, the middle of the third sentence. Uh, it starts out the entrance, new entrance t of the fire station and the proposed path is shown to go. I would like it to say the proposed lighted sidewalk is shown to go because it's not really a proposed path. I think we should be real specific, yeah? Are you looking at the minutes? Yeah. Okay. Wait. The uh, I guess we can talk about where the like where the old Estabrook School is. That's yeah. a path. Proposed path is shown to go in between the fire and police building. Oh, so that that segment is a sidewalk. You're right. 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 Yeah. Which goes to the path. Which path? Yeah. So the uh, it goes it up goes to the sidewalk. Logo. It isn't straight sidewalk to sidewalk. Like it isn't sidewalk from, what I I'll, I'll fix it. So it okay. isn't. So it goes from us in between the buildings. In between the side, buildings is a sidewalk. A sidewalk yeah. So that's the part that I wanted. Yeah. It yeah. says proposed path is shown to go in between the fire and police buildings, and it's not a path. It's a I got you. lighted sidewalk. And then the path continues up the hill. Correct. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. That's you should read that way. Yeah. Thank you. Third paragraph, um, just the third paragraph on that page, the second line of it toward the end, where it says the 20 Wilson Street School. Can you just clarify that and use the name of the actual application, which is the 20 Wilson Street Public Facility Fire Department? Does that make sense? Yeah. And on the next page, the third little blip down, it says a conditional of approval, just a condition of approval. That's all I have. Any other changes or modifications here? The minutes. Okay, so the motion will be for the approval of the minutes as amended. <clears throat> so moved. Seconded. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Next is a public hearing. Conditional use application adult use marijuana store. 357 Portland Street, map R70, lot 12 1. It's in the RCI zone and the applicant is Paper Birch Property. This is a public hearing. That is open to any resident, property owner, the town of Berwick to come forward to the podium and speak solely about this application only. Public hearing is now open. Seeing nobody else come forward, close the public hearing. Moving on to old business, conditional use application, adult use marijuana store, 357 Portland Street, map R70, lot 12-1. It's in the RCI zone. The applicant is Paper Birch Property. And I'll turn it over to the town planner, Mr. Lee J. Yes, good evening. Um, I have not provided you any additional information as far as memo goes. However, this evening before uh, the meeting, we did have a 
fairly thorough site walk with the applicant and went over um, the site and what he's done so far with the property. Um, <coughs> Very exciting um, applicant. Um, he's very energetic about this application, and he should be. It's, um, the site is coming along very well, and it looks really nice. So as it relates to the um, change of use to adult use storefront, um, <clears throat> as I mentioned in my memo previously, that um, I would recommend that if and when the planning board is prepared to approve the application, that they require the applicant to provide a state permit to the town prior to the operation of the adult recreational sales. And if the rules change at the state level, which I kind of hear things are somewhat moving around a little bit, I don't know, I'm looking at the applicant, <laughs> um, <coughs> that it may require coming back for um, additional approval or an amendment to the approval um, if things change at the state level relevant to the operation of, of uh, what he's seeking approval for from you other than that good to go all right hi guys um i i guess you Just know state your name for the record Nudie, and for uh, our viewers at home all the nudie paper bridge property hi. <laughs> um I mean, I guess, you know, we just had our sidewalk and, and now we're just looking to be able to continue our work with our application process. I mean, as you know, that the um, that this process that we're looking for is not an approval from you to open a store. It's literally an approval to apply to the state to open a store. So that's all we seek tonight um, is just the approval. And then that's, you know, six months of standard operating procedures and environmental policies that we have to um, uh, sort of adhere to before we can even get to that licensing. So that's all we're asking for tonight is definitely not permission to open up an adult <coughs> use store just to apply for okay. it. Questions of the applicant? I just want to say that um, just to catch people up who weren't at the site walk, the site was very well done. Thank the, you. the building is gorgeous. It's going to be have uh, casino-like security in it. Uh, nobody's getting in or out of that <laughs> building without us, uh, you know, knowing exactly who they are. Um, and it just seemed, it's, a, it's very nicely done. It, it, was, it was thorough. There is nothing that I could see that was not accounted for, so. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. The only comment I would offer is I, I was the one at the last meeting I had asked uh, Lee J about what possible options we might have knowing that the state hasn't acted. Paul's been pretty clear, the applicant's been pretty clear on explaining what he's trying to do. Um, so I'm here tonight to say that I spoke to Paul Bover and I point blank asked him what his opinion would be on this application. And you guys have known Paul <laughs> and um, he is one that likes to follow by the book and his words which are very soft and they come out kind of weak when he speaks but he's very clear is that he does not want to see the cart before the horse and he would be waiting on the state regulations to come out before he would see this as acting on this application so I just want to be on the record that I will be voting no based on my conversations I've had with Paul and I explained that to, to Paul as well <laughs> earlier okay. this evening. All right. Any other uh, comments or questions for the applicant? All um, right. Go ahead. <clears throat> so let's just say, because we've approved this for a grow facility before and medical marijuana, and it's changing now to adult use. Let's say that the state decides that they can't get their act together for another two years on the adult use. Do you plan on coming back to get the medical marijuana at conditional use back because you can't operate medical marijuana while you're waiting for adult use yeah so though i think i believe the whole way that it would transition is yeah. we would have we, and if they push back the adult use yeah. we would just continue as as medical we wouldn't be able to transition because over of the conditional use yeah so basically what's gonna happen okay. is we're gonna have to shut the door okay. Okay. on one day and reopen it the okay. next mm -hmm. and because of that conditional use correct he, okay. he his his approval, or condition of approval rather, his, sorry. yes that's correct right. his approval for the medical side still is in existence okay and it could not transition to an adult use until after he gets any permit from the state to allow adult use so okay. he would continue to operate as a medical awesome okay. thank you Sorry, what could have been more clear. That was very succinct. Any further questions? 
Okay, so the application was, uh, that last meeting, it was uh, voted as complete, held a site walk this evening and a public hearing. So next we'll be moving along with approving the application. With the condition on it. Correct. Yes. So, so if somebody wants to make a motion, just make sure, you know, that's right. that so condition, of a, a condition of approval. Yes, I move that we approve the application or the conditional use permit for 357 Portland Street, Paper Birch property with the condition that requires the applicant to provide a state permit to the town prior to the operation of the adult recreational sales. And if the rules change at the state level, require requiring any change in the applicant's approach to this approval that an additional amendment be sought with the planning board prior prior to that start of retail sales correct okay so we have a motion I'll second and a second further discussion all in favor no okay so there we go it's uh, one two three four and one no okay all right. thank, thank you Paul. Thanks, Frank. thank you guys appreciate it all right thank you <coughs> Next up in new business is conditional use application, school and parking expansion, 20 Blackberry Hill Road, which is the Hussey School, map R57, lot 27, it's in the R2 zone, and the applicant is SAD60. Lee J. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, this is a site plan review application. Um, so just as, a be as beginning before I get into my memo, um, it is not a sketch. Um, you would be reviewing this at this point to determine completeness, and I'll get into that at the end of my app memo. Um, but the proposed project will expand the existing building and parking lots at the Hussey School on Blackberry Hill Road. Including, included in the work for this application is the construction of two new parking areas, a redesigned student drop-off area, a new playground, and a new two-story building addition, which is 17,000 plus square feet. This project will reconfigure the layout in order to achieve a less dangerous, more controlled traffic flow through the site and relocate parking, parking to areas that will result in less danger to students and staff and residents. As I understand it, MSAD 60 is in the process of contracting with CHA Architects to design the building addition. It is the intent of the final design um, will not expand beyond the footprint indicated on the site plans included with this application. If it is determined that the new building will need to be increased, the project will be brought back to the town for revisions to that plan. The project will require a site location of development permit from Maine DEP. The application for that permit has been submitted and is currently in the review process. The applicant has proposed um, low impact design for the site. The applicant can best describe these during the, during the, I call it the sketch, but during the presentation, site plan presentation. The work um, also required an NRPA, National Resource Protection Act, <coughs> Tier 1 permit for the proposed impact to the roadside wetland along Blackberry Hill Road. The permit was granted in July uh, 22nd of this year. There are um, protected wetlands on the west end of the property that were enhanced um, as part, it says as pale, <laughs> it's pale, as part of the DEP approval um, no, to construct the Noble High School. Um, no recorded document describing this area has been obtained. However, it is intended that all wetlands west of the existing drainage swale will remain unaltered. The project is um, both an amended conditional use as well as a site plan review application. Under stormwater, uh, the stormwater system proposed is somewhat complicated uh, to explain. So for the intricate details, I would suggest the reviewing sheets L4 and L5 um, and the applicant's engineer is here and he can better explain that to you. Um, currently, you see a series of catch basins on the west of the, to the west of the existing school which takes a great deal of the water and sends it to settle the area of the site and empties into the wetland. What will happen now is that the system will include two large subsurface treatment areas that will treat water and eventually um, get it into the existing 15-inch pipe to the rear of the site and empty the treated water into the wetland in the south portion of the site. The front parking area proposed on the northwest portion of the site will have a portion of that site with pervious pavers. All water will be picked up 
um, <clears throat> by the catch basins in the southeast corner of the parking lot and emptied into the wetland. Along Blackberry Hill Road, stormwater will be treated in focal point treatment locations before being dispersed east, not eat, east of the existing parking area. The new parking area on this side of the site will not have pervious pavement, however. The grading is, is in the lot, the grading in the lot will sheet flow um, all water into the proposed treatment ponds. Wetlands. Um, the wetlands in the area are considered a protected resource by way of being shoreland zone stream protection with a 100 foot setback. The project as proposed does not impact the setback and meets all the required standards of the shoreland zone. The main DEP will also have an opportunity to review this project for those impacts. Under traffic, the applicant has not specifically indicated what the use of the new 17,000 square foot addition to be for. Um, are we adding more kids and or teachers? Will the drop off um, versus number of buses change? I would think this is an important um, information for us to know in the application going forward. The applicant has submitted a waiver, um, one waiver, of 9.8.F.2.B.I which is simply asking for scale, an increase in the scale of the plan so that it's drafted on one sheet rather than multiple sheets because of the um, size of the area. The process going forward is to find the application complete and waive the above requested 9.8.F.2.B.I. Um, then set a date for a site walk and set a date for the public hearing. That's all I have at this time for you. This is a site, this would trigger site plan review. Correct. Yep. I think I said that. Yeah. You did. I yeah. just double checking. Yes. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Neil Raposo. I'm a civil consultant. Uh, we're representing uh, SAD 60 for this project. Uh, we've, it's a project that's been in the works since 2012 uh, when we initially brought it to DEP to see what we could do to get more parking out here because as anyone who travels around here in the morning or at the end of school, it's, it's, uh, it can get really backed up there and people don't utilize the the bus system as they have in the past uh, students are coming from a little bit further away and it's it's an issue that the school really wants to get ahead of and, and try to try to work out uh, we approached the DEP again and uh, they gave us a little more you know, some more options that we could take advantage of for uh, for redevelopment and taking advantage of some of the some of the existing features of the site that allowed us to get to this point where we can uh, start to apply for that site location permit from the state and here at the town. Um, if you want me just to run through each section here. Sure. Or, okay. Do you have a microphone to walk with? or You could just point that towards you. Okay, so uh, here we are. It's the, the main school is, is right here. Uh, this is that addition we're talking about, that two-story addition. That one is <laughs> it's a little bit up in the air uh, due to the fact that SAD 60 is just now contracting with an architect uh, to perform the work to design uh, not only this expansion but several other expansions in the district. Uh, this project is technically a separate design uh, trying to take into account what may be coming from there. So this, this application, if approved, may need to come back in for, for a modification or a revision uh, once they finalize the plan for that building. But they would like to try to get these site improvements going sooner than later to try to you know increase the capacity of the site <clears throat> um, so coming up here from the uh, from the east on blackberry hill road uh, what we're proposing to do is to um, replace this existing entrance uh, that's closer to this bus entrance take that right out and uh, place a new entrance here this has been revised since uh, the packets were submitted uh, to increase this this entry here uh, and that's more in case they have the the tractor trailer deliveries they want to be able to have those uh, completely, you know, completely uh, travel on the pavement instead of we were going to try and do some reinforced turf and things on the sides, but they decided they'd rather have it expanded. And then we've worked in uh, you know, a, a two-lane turning here so you can have independent turn lanes on that entrance. Um, so that's that parking lot. Uh, we utilized more. Uh, we're envisioning for either staff or event space. Um, it's, it does have access through, but you do have to go through the parking lot, so it's not an ideal space to have you know, kids being dropped off. So that's why we, we're trying to push all that traffic right to the front of the school here. 
I've taken away one of the one of the parking lanes out front and expanded uh, expanded the uh, the drive through so we can have a full separated drop off lane that's separated by a curved island uh, just to increase the safety out there and give these parents a little more a little more space to come in drop off and safely get out right now uh, if you if you're familiar with the school there's just that little circle here and there's very little room for any cars to stack if multiple parents are dropping off kids at the same time. Uh, the bus entrance and exit, uh, we plan to leave as is. Discussions with the school, um, they said even if they have increases in, uh, in the students that we had kind of predicted from this rough uh, footprint and the classrooms it makes available, they said that that should be uh, still sufficient to handle the bus load that they have now and the, uh, the additional students. So we kept that as is. Uh, and then towards, towards the west here, we added, uh, we're proposing to add, uh, this is going to be primi primarily staff parking uh, to the side here. It's going to be like, we, uh, like was presented by Lee J. We have a, an area of uh, pervious pavement in there. Uh, the rest of it's just gonna be conventional pave. Anywhere where we have major traffic and turning, uh, we didn't wanna have any of the, any of the pervious pavers because those, they just don't last with the, with any of the turning vehicles or any heavy vehicles like uh, delivery vehicles coming in here. So we kept that all on the uh, on that, uh, employee parking area. Um, and out back, this actually, before I go there, this uh, line on the outside here, that is the existing pave, uh, pavement out there. It's been, uh, it's been playgrounds. They've had some planters out there. They've had the portables out there. Uh, so we propose not to expand beyond that existing uh, impervious area that's more for for DEP requirements it made it you know, easier to predict what we we're going to be able to get permitted um, so that's that's that is our our full uh, footprint for the building that we're proposing the architect comes in they change it we'll be back for modification but for now uh, after speaking with CHA they think that <coughs> it's a sufficient footprint to work with so uh, out back here uh, in in the past uh, you know, PTO and, and the school have put in different uh, playground items out here and they all crept further and further into the setback from the stream that was supposed to be maintained in the back. Uh, so we're proposing to completely remove the existing playground and pull it up within that, uh, within the allowed, uh, you know, the allowed development area. Um, as far as, I'll run through the, through the drainage real quick unless anybody has a lot of questions on it. Um, Basically, they should have tripped a DEP site location permit years ago because they just kept adding little bits of little bits of you know de developed area and pervious area, and that's why in 2012, when we went in, they said you're not going to be able to do anything here unless you do a full site development, and so that put the brakes on for a while. And uh, but recently, when we went in, they said you know I think there's possibilities on this site to take advantage of, and we present we uh, proposed. Uh, doing a wet pond system with these, these are actually existing wetlands that are uh, up near Blackberry Hill Road. Uh, they're basically just swales that stay wet. They don't have too much of an ecological value. Uh, so we went to work and said, well, we could design uh, gravel wetlands in here that provide a lot better treatment, a lot better, uh, a lot better you know, use for the environment and for e the ecology in the area. And uh, we would we could use that and then there's an existing swale here that's basically, it's turned into a wetland swale. And the DEP said they would consider allowing us to use that for treatment depending on what the rest of the site's treatment looked like. Uh, so that's what we have presented to the state. It's in review now, we're in discussions with them. Um, we, as Lee J said, we had to go get a, an NRPA tier one permit for the wetland fill we're proposing here and at the other entrance on this side. Uh, that was reviewed by the Army Corps and they blessed it and uh, we received that permit back in July. Uh, so as far as any other specific things, this, this uh, porous paver system here is something we've been working with um, ACF Environmental uh, and their engineers and they've been helping us with the, with the, the best design we can, we can get here and get the most out of. And they've also been helping us with the, the focal points, which are basically like little rain gardens with uh, you know, uh, an engineered filter system that they produce that uh, DEP has blessed as, <coughs> as a more intense treatment method. So using all of those and 
something showing here. And in these two areas here in the, in the field, there are two uh, large subsurface sand filters, which basically, you know, your typical almost subsurface disposal system kind of set up. And since the, wa uh, the uh, groundwater is so high here, these are actually going to be line systems because we're only uh, 24 to 36 inches in some spots to groundwater here. So we're going to have to protect that and, and line those. Uh, but using all those, we're able to bring the treatment and and the, uh, and the flood attenuation to the site up to standards that the DEP would accept. So now we're just reviewing the, uh, with the DEP how we got there. And so we're hoping to get that permit uh, sometime, sometime before December, but we'll see how, how things go as they you know, get through their review. If there's anything, sure, I missed some things. Anybody has any questions? Can you just tell me because I don't have, I've lost my plan now. Um, what the new impervious surface um, square footage is going to be? I have the existing. Oh, let's. Yeah, I think I have that. Impervious. Impervious. Yeah. The new total. The new total. Yeah. I should have brought the. Uh, Total amount of a new of, of impervious is going to be 1385, 3.85. I'm sorry, 3.85 acres, and the existing impervious we had a 3.28. So it's going to be another, you know, 0.5. Uh, Half acre, yeah. Yep. Does that include the building? That does not include the building. No. Nope. Oh, so no. on top of that, you got to add the building. And when you say 17,000 square foot building, is that 8,000 per floor? No, it's 17,000 square foot is the footprint. It's the footprint. Yep. So you, we have to add that into that impervious. That, that's a lot of, there's a lot of asphalt right there to begin yeah, no, with. A that's, lot of that's, that's all paved. Yeah, so. a lot of that is impervious right now. But again, right. the numbers he gave yeah, us. Yeah, the number, yeah, I would like to see like what Unless the Unless it was in the existing 2.3. It was. Yep. Was it? Yeah, yeah. all of that yeah, is no, this, Yeah, like I said, this, this, the outside line that's, that's you know, uh, the darker hatch around that, yep. around this, yep. that's the existing okay. line out there. All right, there. so, yeah, so 3.85 is the total yeah. new impervious. So the building doesn't actually yeah. right, that's increase it because it's already net impervious. Zero. Net zero. Yeah, yeah, so yeah that's, that's, that's kind of why we gave that parking. footprint to start off with as our, you know, as our, as our starting point. Yeah. Uh, it, may, it may be that when the architect goes through it, they say you don't need all that space and they ra you know, ratchet it back. But it's not going to change our coverage at all unless they add some green space in. Was there a baseball field there, I thought, at one time yep, with that yes. parking? Is that gone now? The ba baseball field is going to be gone. It's, right now, it's, yeah. it's not... Right about there, yeah. It's yeah. not really used. Yeah, the backstop's right about here. Um, and it was one of the things that the, you know, the school said, we can, we can live without the baseball field, but yeah. the parking has become dangerous. Did they ever so fold that into the baseball system? Did the kids ever play? I've in the never seen a child on? playing no. on that baseball field. No, they, they, field they didn't use it for any of the, any okay. of the Cal Ripken. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't think league. it was used for the Berwick Youth League. Youth no, league, so it, was yeah. a kick, it was a kickball field. <laughs> <laughs> they don't allow the kids to play on that because it's too wet as of now. Yeah. Right. Yep. So it's really it's pretty wet there. Um, and then just as a note, I did see in one of the letters to the water and sewer department that they have estimated um, the water and sewer usage based on adding 450 students and 40 staff members. So I just wanted that to be read into the public record before our public hearing. Yeah, and that was, that was just kind of based on as far as the square, the footage, square footage of the footage existing of the yeah. and what they could, what they could do totally with that. Totally understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're so transparent here that I just wanted to say it. Gotcha. So how is parking actually calculated for an elementary school? In elementary school, the, the required parking is horribly low if you look at the standards for it. I believe it's, um, I can't remember the actual number, I think it's one per, per one and a, I have to look back at it, but I think for this one we only technically were required to have 78 spaces or something like that. I have to, I don't know if anybody has the code right here, but uh, once, you get into the, once you get into the junior high, it gets, you know, more, you need more get into the high school then you need one per student mm -hmm. and so it's uh it ends up being a whole lot more parking so all these that's what we're, the problem we're having with all these elementary schools they were all designed with 40 parking spaces and that almost covers the staff you know so it's uh 
we've been trying to squeeze all the parking we can. Because it, it said the existing one was a hundred and well, it gave it. You gave some it numbers in there. Or something like that. Yeah. And you got if you add the numbers, a hundred and six, and you add the thirty-two and the fifty-four or whatever. It comes up to 192, and you're saying you only have 177. So yeah, I mean, we took so this the, we took out that row here for the for the yeah, drive through. For the drive through. Okay. Yeah, so that was okay. kind of one of the. Mm. I said, you know, if you really want safety to be the number one concern, that should go in first, and then we'll get whatever parking we can. Do you have enough stacking for buses? For the buses here? Yeah. That was my concern when I asked them. They said we have enough as far as the buses they have now. It's it's plenty mm. to have that. And two more, I believe they said they could do. Um, because I've seen buses hanging out on Blackberry Hill Road, I think, at times. Yeah, I haven't. I don't I have not that seen that, but during school, it's been a long time since I've had yeah, I drop off. Yeah, I can't confirm or deny that one, but I, I went with what they, what they said they needed, and so that's all I showed. But and then one other thing is a fire lane around the new school addition a requirement. It's not going to be a requirement. They're actually, any expansion they're going to do to this, it's going to trigger the need to have the whole thing fully sprinkled. Um, so the only, if we needed the fire lane all the way around, uh, all we need is, uh, I take it back, we don't need the fire lane all the way around unless we were going to really increase that, increase the square footage in there so we could get that, uh, the increase for We're access. really only looking at the site work. We're not looking at the new school itself. And obviously, the fire chief will have another shot at looking at right. Yeah, no, the, right. the, the fire whole thing will have to review the whole. <coughs> thing. Oh, yeah. When they get ready to submit their building permits, right. there'll be all the architectural information will okay. be submitted, and whether it's here or at the state level, the state fire marshal, um, you guys, code office, everybody's going to get a crack at looking at the various codes. So if they come back and say you need a fire lane, a paved fire lane, twenty feet around it, that's going to go back to your impervious and it's going to increase it. Right. Does that trigger another level of permit? Are you? Does that kick you into the next tier permit? There's no. There's. We're at the highest tier we can go now. This is. This is it. Yeah, I was so curious as to why you were using the pervious one. Was that because you were bumping right up against the? No, it's the headline, it's, or is it? It's. Uh, DP basically said we want to see you make every effort to treat everything you can and that was one of the things we said we have well, we have these remote you know parking areas that uh, it's tough to drain them you know places to, to, to pawn them and filter them or to get them into one of the yeah. retention cells and they said have you looked into the you know the pervious pave and we've done it in a few projects and uh, I said well we'll install it if it makes sense and when I went through the numbers this this is actually the, the 75 foot line to the wetland um, so we didn't want to bring any BMPs coming closer to that. Uh, so we kept it from there over, and then we, I only wanted to bring, uh, I only wanted to do it in the parking spaces and this one straight away. Um, and they accepted that as, as an adequate amount of treatment for that, for that parking area. I mean, without, I mean, you, you mentioned the water table being 24 to 36 inches. Yep. And I mean, it's, it's wet out there. And I, I, as I indicated earlier, when we talked initially that they had a problem citing the original school yep. because of the soils and they ended up moving it over now we seem to be sitting right on top of the area that they yeah, avoided they back 14 or 15 whenever they built that school like i said yeah no the, the soils are going to require some some remediation to be able to do that and i would think it'd be, be hard to understand how effective these rain gardens and these these ponds will be without really understanding what the underlying soils are because we could just end up with standing water well, yeah, no, sitting in these things coming off of all this impervious. Basically what we've, what we've done with all of them is uh, we were kind of, we were aware of that going into the whole thing. Uh, and we, we worked with, uh, like I said, we worked with ACF who's done a lot of designs on these, on these BMPs. And we've decided that everything is going to be lined. So they're all going to be kind of independent systems. Um, it's, so they, they won't you know, they, they won't uh, vary with, with groundwater. It's an extra cost, but I think it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, required to avoid what you're talking about and having, you know, having the groundwater infiltrate and affect uh, the treatment in here. I mean, the only comment I'd have, Dave, does this rise up to where we would want an independent firm to look at this, the drainage? If the town is willing to expend the money on that, then absolutely. Well, it's we school. No, well, I mean, if the, if the, the town is willing, if, if Lee J contacts the town manager and asks him to <laughs> I mean, I will tell you, for years, this planning board was very fortunate to have Ed Minnick on it. 
I don't know, did you know Ed? Yes, I knew the name. And he, that's all he did when he was in the regional planning groups over in New Hampshire was drainage. Yep. And he would go through this thing from pre to post and... and no, and I think that this is, that's very much warranted. Okay. I know it's, it's, it is going through the full I will site location uh, permitting process, so Aubrey Strauss up at DP's, she's, yeah. she's new there, but she's very, uh, she has a lot of experience oh. and she's... Yep. Go ahead, Lee J. I will communicate with the manager and see if he will allow that to happen. Okay. And, and I have one more, Dave. Snow removal. Uh, that's mine. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Snow removal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, let me see, I believe I have that on. I don't have that sheet. I, I thought it was one on one of the sheets. If it's not, it definitely it will be. It probably is. It uh, definitely will be because that is that's another one of the things that, uh, that for the site location process, they want to have everything uh, located on there as well. So yeah, I mean, if God forbid it wasn't turned on on the sheets I gave them, it'll be it'll be on quickly, and I'll I'll be back for the next meeting with it. And along with that is what about do they sand and salt the the, the parking areas as their typical practice at the school and the vegetation is it salt resistant as, type? Yes, yeah, as, as part of the um, yes yeah, part of the the site location stuff, uh, we do have to we're going to have to develop that stormwater uh, management plan okay. and give them that and it's going to it's going to have a reduced a reduced salt um, sand element to it um, so for the most part uh, the plants that they that will specify in these in the in the wetlands here they'll be salt tolerant and um, the plants that uh, the ACF the provider of the of the other treatment uh, BMPs they provide okay. them and they and they make sure they're you know they're hardier the roadside <coughs> plants almost. So. Okay, so we're looking at whether or not this application is complete this evening. So we're going to have another opportunity to come back here, um, possibly even a couple more other times, and um, discuss the application and ask questions. But tonight we're just going to uh, try to move it forward by uh, looking to see if the application is complete and then scheduling uh, a site walk and um, so one of the things I just want to remind the board of um, in looking at the issue for completeness. Completeness means have they submitted the information that the application form requires them to submit right. um, versus is there additional issues or whatnot that the board wants Correct. them yeah. to submit or look at. Right. So your level of completeness threshold <clears throat> I would say is lower. Um, then your full um, review of the application. Right, it's just check, it's a yeah. checklist. Correct, yeah. right. correct. Um, from my looking at it, um, that's why I had recommended to you that I would suggest that they have submitted everything, including the waiver for the plan size. Mm -hmm. um, Do we need to grant that waiver today? Um, you should, if you're finding the application complete. Should we grant it prior to or after finding I would the application do it complete, prior sir? To. That is a great question. Well, in that case, let me get my page paper here. I move that we grant the waiver that the applicant is seeking on 9.8.F.2.B.I. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Further discussion? Thank you. This is just for the, uh, this is just for the, the waiver. waiver. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. All right. Next, next up would be um, whether or not the application is complete. Does Sean want to make this motion? Oh. Is it complete? I've, I, I've reviewed it, um, therefore I'm going to make a motion <laughs> that we find this application for the expansion of the parking area at, at the Vivian E. Hussey School complete. I'll second. Further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay. Um, when it comes to a site walk, public hearing, all that stuff, w next week we have a site walk or next uh, meeting on the 3rd of October, we have one with another applicant. So we wouldn't be able to do it on that day. You're not under a time crunch here, are you? 
Uh, no, the, the, the time crunch is <coughs> most likely going to be at the DEP. Right, yeah. exactly. You're going to be at, pretty much at the mercy of them. Now, if we push this off to the 17th for a site walk and you get the okay for a peer review, yep. that would give us, we could do that. That, that gives us a month. Yep. And we could do that, right? I peer would review. suspect so, yeah. sure. We could do a peer review before we even come back to a site walk or anything. Does that sound good? The um, w will we actually have the drainage report? Uh, I did in time the, for the peer review person to look at it. I, I guess. submitted the the chapter twelve stormwater from site location. I can just reproduce. Yeah, I mean, oh, you have I, that. Okay. I have that in my possession. But you're talking huge document. I wasn't oh. going to print it off. You know, I wasn't right. Gonna, but I'm being. Yeah, we're going to each get a copy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are very thorough planning. When board, are you going to Lee iPads? <laughs> <laughs> um, Electronic um, review, like or however you would do Certainly it. Certainly, the third party paper reviewer paper. would get a copy of all of that information yeah. as well. Matt? So do we? Do we? Go ahead. Nope. No, go ahead. I'll wait. <laughs> go ahead. I want to ask a question for him after, though. Go ahead. Okay. Might as well do it on the record. I'm going to do it on the record okay. for <laughs> all of you guys' sake. That's why I'm right. asking it. Go ahead. Thank you. Do we want to go with the 17th of October at, at uh, let's see, 5 o'clock? Because by that time, it's, well, yeah. we're not rolling oh. back the clocks yet, but by that time, the sun's going to be It'll setting be around 6. So let's say 5 o'clock on the 17th. I will be traveling that day, so please mark your calendar to be do you want FaceTime? present. I'll be in Florida, therefore I will not be FaceTiming. Okay. <laughs> So that's what we'll do then. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. You can, you can bring it up during the uh, uh, comments. Perfect. Yeah. Um, or when we discuss our... You took off that little part in here that usually normally we have any items of interest. Yeah, yeah. No, no informational, informational items. items. Yeah, informational it's items. It's because of Frank that he took it off. I oh. <laughs> can, I just, can I just add something? One more thing. One more thing. About this, this plan. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, I, sure, I guess. The um, applicant's I just, still here. I just had a couple of things, two things really. Um, the porous pavement. Yep. Is there any way we can get away without that? It's been my experience that it fails more often than it succeeds. And that's that's that was my hesitation in putting it in to begin with, uh, but I think having it there, uh, you know, as I've shown it, it's in an area that I hate to say it, it will be easier to easier to replace and, and maintain if anything happens to it. Uh, and it's also the the fact that the DEP was looking for something over there. Yeah. And that's really the best option we can fit is in it, there. Is it asphalt or is it pavers? It's. The, what we're showing now is the is the reinforced pavers, the, pavers, deep, okay. the deeper ones. Yep. Uh, that's in speaking with um, with ACF and a couple of the a couple of the other manufacturers and pavers, and they said these these are the new ones, and they they seem to be hold up the best on the ones we've tried. Yeah, uh, I just, the facilities folks need to know what right. they're getting into. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah please no, please look into the EJ Prescott's grid system with the stone fill. Okay, yeah. Please look into that because that doesn't tend to require <coughs> the vacuuming like some of these paving systems do, yeah. the higher yeah. maintenance no, they, thing. And I think there are a little, it might be a little more to put it in up front, but I think over the, the, the okay, course yeah, of I'll, maintaining I'll take a look it, and make sure it's that just a stone. Fill. And there's one down at Hampton, Winnicott High School that they've, they've been using for years to sh have people go look at. What else do you have, Sean? The only other thing that I was, could think of, well, looking at the, that new parking lot on the, on the west side is... Where the proximity of that entrance to that proposed development that's on the other side of the road. Yeah, it's, what is, I mean, it's, what it looks is like it's going to be right across the street from you know, it. The, and yeah. is that I don't know if you guys have looked at those plans, if yeah. they're available to look at, just to see where your entrance yeah, that, that lands entrance. versus where yeah, that yeah. proposed entrance. That entrance, I believe, is right on. Right I, on. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I just don't want to have any like a four-way right there hiccups and headaches there and on the Worcester Brook side does the speed the uh, light for the school zone have to be moved because it's right. it's it seems you it's right on the top of the hill when you come <coughs> over I, think, I, I believe it's it's right right at the back of this at the back of the wetland here once you get beyond I'm uh, talking about on the, the Worcester Brook end. The other end uh, yeah you come up uh, you come up from the brook and it seems to be right there and does that is yeah, there that, a distance that needs that, to be that, maintained that, that maybe need to may need to be reviewed yeah Okay. Yeah, we'll take a look into that, too. All right. Thank that you. Good points. Did you asked something for the applicant, so you should say it now yeah. while he's still here. Okay. So <laughs> to the microphone. All right. 
You have to push over a little bit. I got to push over. Okay, so this is kind of a silly question. Heads up. Um, we just permitted in our office for the Hussey School a four-classroom mobile unit. Will that be going away for good once you put up this building, or will that stay where it is? Oh, yeah, no, that uh, is... That mobile will be will be right in the corner of where this building is proposed. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's so it will go. So that, away. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. No, okay, I just want to make sure. That'll be long gone. So yep. Okay. We'll have, that's, that's not a silly question. I know, but I just wanted to make sure because I'm They're sure actually going to we'll build get... a new building around the modulars right, yeah. and leave them inside, <laughs> like entombed. You are just so funny. Though. <laughs> I just know that James and I will field that phone call, so I just wanted to yeah. make sure that Fair enough. it was yeah. answered. No, that's a, that's okay. a, and please have the architect yep. when they select them do the soils early. <laughs> And oh, yeah. don't do the soil report in the 11th hour. No, that never works. It d doesn't work. <clears throat> All right. Great. Thank you. We'll see you on the uh, 17th. All right. Great. Sorry. Okay. Next on the agenda is uh, we have to approve the findings of fact for the conditional use application for the public facility fire department at 20 Wilson Street. And the applicant was the town of Berwick. So um, I've reviewed these. These look pretty good as everybody they had a chance to. They look thorough. Yeah. They look mm -hmm. thorough. Lee J must have typed them up. Yes. Do, do you have <laughs> no, type, <laughs> no typos? I typed them. James fixed them. Dave looked at them. Mm -hmm. They've been eyeballed by everybody. You've got a big stack of drawings in that envelope there. Is that the fire station bundle? Yes. Yes. Do you have the, that last plan that they submitted when they came in here that showed the walkway continuing up through? Because when I was sitting there, I noticed there's a there's a leader with a note on it, and I never got a chance to ask what that note said. And it's either the leftover note from the demolition of the Estherbrook School, or it's a new note tagged onto that walkway. If you could just take a quick look at that. This plan set does not have the walkway. Uh, that well, would what be good my is that? I guess I'd really like to know what that note says if it pertains to what that walkway is I think they changed that, <coughs> that plan I've got an email I had an email at the time to get the plan the full set so between yeah. what we talked today about getting everything we're gonna have to sign them anyway right no oh we don't because sign I mean we also had the, an email from Tom when they decided they could they could look from the selectmen that they could look at that pathway through there and their budget could support it. Mm -hmm. The question is, are they building it, or are they just drawing it as a line on the line? We know they're building. It was not it. proposed. It's not proposed. It's it's proposed in the sense that it's on the plan set, and it was suggested that it would be constructed at a later date. My my, my concern would be is it was that not the sidewalk. Determined. The walk, the, the, the path. path. Oh, the path. path. The, hill. Yeah. Oh, okay. the sidewalk is part of the like, complex. I, yeah. Yeah. But, yes. but what, what I would like to, to, to look at is because if they're going to cut that grade back because they need the fill, if, they're, if they could cut it, level it, cut it, you know, leave that actual width. I don't think for we're even path. allowed to. Really I, yeah, I mean, we're really path. getting into the weeds but, but, here. But, but I don't want to lose sight of that because it'd be a lot easier if the recreation d funds are going to pay for that, that yeah. they do it at the time it's being built. I would say that conversation ought to be had with Todd yeah. Gammon. Okay. Well, yeah. yes. We're in the process of sorting out all those documents that we wanted well, to make sure we had copies of. Well, we are, but tonight is only the findings of fact and the applicant is not present, so you want to be careful about your conversation. I just don't want to lose sight of that. No. Nope. Oh, no. Because no one here is <laughs> going to <laughs> lose sight of all that. that? You think yeah. we've lost sight. I don't think you've Right there on the radar, right there. Two jars of moonshine in my house that prove that it hasn't been lost. All right, so let's discuss this. I, well, um, I will move that we f approve the findings of fact for the conditional use of 20 Wilson Street. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Any informational items from the board? For the board or from the board? From the board to the board. Uh, I actually stuff. have one that I learned about um, the other day um, that I think will be of interest to everyone is we're going to want to change the ordinance. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh -oh. cough is the cough back. is back. <laughs> <laughs> change the ordinance uh, um, maybe for the November... Do we have time? We don't have no. time. Yeah. No. We don't For have next time. spring. Yep. But we can change it procedurally 
anyway, just as a practice. But um, as of the beginning of the year, one of the new state law changes that slid under the radar is that the um, Registry of Deeds will no longer be accepting mylars. They will want everything on 20 pound white paper. So for now, any plans that you sub that get submitted to be signed and recorded yeah. in the registry, we're going to want to have them on 20 pound white paper. Well, thank wow. you for that update. You going back in time? What? <laughs> so what do we have to change? Glossy. Requiring mylar <laughs> to be submitted on any subdivision plans okay. for signatures. We'd like it on it's papyrus. 20 pound <laughs> the only question I would would have is that I know you put that note out there that in Sanford Jensen Baird Gardner and Henry is going to hold that yes marijuana thank you. Yeah. thing yeah. It, it's we've more got than marijuana we've got three people that have asked to go that's a quorum so does that have to be posted that no no this is a okay. workshop presentation by SMPDC um, it's an sample. educational opportunity that doesn't have to be I'll posted you won't be there um, and yes yeah, so I'll just quickly um, Jensen Baird, Gardner and Henry is SMPDC's attorney, um, and we've done this previously. We're going to be doing one of our workshops. Um, the subject matter will be all things marijuana. Um, we're going to be discussing a number of more recent court cases and how they would affect planning board actions and ZBA actions. Um, doing some boardsmanship and some um, Robert's Rules of Order kind of conversation. Um, so anybody that wants to go, <laughs> let um, Marion Alexander in my office know, um, or let me know, and we'll register you folks. Well, and, and then we can hang out with oh James yeah, or, or James. Let James know. Then we can hang out with James afterwards because he lives just right around the, there. Right? So just for the record, multiple members of the planning absolutely. board will be going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Three from the planning board, two from the board of appeals. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Maybe we should go hit a brewery afterwards. <laughs> got any in Sanford? Um, what you got? You can get public house. Let's go to the public house. You can get house. Corner Point at uh, Back Street. That's where we're going. All right. Anything else? <laughs> All right. Next on the agenda is the adjournment. Dave, that's oh, it's me again. I motion for adjournment. <laughs> <laughs> You're learning, Dave. Motion. Okay. All in favor? Thank you.